Okay, I'd like to call to order the work session for the City Council for the City of Wildwood for Monday, January 27, 2020. Uh, Ms. Sturmlinger, would you please call the roll? Mayor Bolin? Here. Councilmember Stevens? Here. Councilmember McCune? Here. Councilmember Boat? Present. Councilmember Bertolino? Councilmember Dodwell? Here. Councilmember Remy? Present. Councilmember Edens? Here. Councilmember Brost? Here. Councilmember Garitano? Present. Councilmember Werther? Present. Councilmember Jordan? Here. Councilmember McCutcheon? Here. Councilmember Farmer? Councilmember Dillard? Here. Councilmember Bartoni? Here. Councilmember Gregnani? Here. Okay, thank you. And for those of you that are with us this evening in the audience, thank you for being here. If you have a cell phone or other electronic device that is on, if you would please uh, turn uh, the volume to silent while we're in the meeting, we would appreciate it. Uh, moving uh, next to no mayor comments, announcements, uh, information items, we have seven, uh, and we have no action items and one miscellaneous item. So uh, before we go to the miscellaneous item, is there anything under uh, the informational section that any member of the council uh, would like to discuss or about which you have a question? Councilmember Stevens. Joe, I had a couple of questions on Just real quick on the Bellevue Farms for the cleanup, um, where it did it? It didn't mention where in the budget that that was coming out of. So I was just curious on that. Um, and the, did they have a goal for how much clearing that they're going to do? And are they still looking for more volunteers? In terms of the budget cost, the department will utilize for the one restroom facility we placed at the location. And it is only charged once they begin servicing it. So it's at the location now, but not being serviced. That'll come out of what's called 4208, the line item in the parks budget for equipment leasing. And the one dumpster will come out of the abatement fund, which is in the Department of Planning versus parks budget. Okay. And I noticed that's a, that's a big area. Did, like, did they have a goal on how much they're trying to get out of there? Or and are they still looking for volunteers? It is a large area. That's why I believe they uh, are using the adage, uh, small bites equal a large bite eventually. And um, they're starting with three phases. Uh, I think the first phase will probably take at least the spring and fall. Because I would not encourage them to do it during the summer. Uh, the, the ticks and the chiggers, the snakes and everything else that comes out that time of year would probably dissuade me from being out there for any length of time. So I would say, from my perspective, at least six months per phase. So it could be a year to a year and a half before they're complete. Um, and yes, they're always looking for volunteers. OK, thank you. Oh, Councilor. I'm sorry, I did have one sorry. more uh, while you're out there, Joe. On the rural internet um, update, did I read that correctly that the proposals that are going out are for like the middle mile um, proposals? And is that similar to like if you did a sewer district and would everyone along that stretch have to buy into it before the middle mile would go in? I think from talking with CTC Technology and Energy, they're hoping that the respondents will accept not only the installation of the middle mile but the <coughs> last mile as well which is from the main so to speak the fiber to the home um, the difference is in that middle mile the request for proposals talks of assistance from the city whether it be easements finances etc so the idea is is to lessen the middle mile cost and encourage them to complete the network to the home where they actually then recoup their cost by service. I think the short answer is we don't know nearly enough information to answer that question yet. Well, the RFP did mention um, an incentive package potentially. Um, I do want to be clear on that, and that was a point of discussion when we brought the request for proposals to City Council. And we do have $350,000 in this year's budget for this particular effort, the rural internet access effort. Right. 
Councilor Greg Nani. Yeah, I bring you back up to the podium there, uh, Mr. Vunich. Yes, sir. Uh, just a couple questions on the Bellevue Farm issue. I, I, I probably heard this sometime in the past, but I don't remember. Is that is that's on a septic system? Is that right? It will be on a septic system if we build restrooms. Okay, that's what that's what I thought. It's not in it's not in MSD's catchment area. Yes, and sir. is there an existing well on that property? There is a well that was in association with the residents. Residence obviously right. has been removed due to arson, right. and it was capped by St. Louis County and would be available if we needed it. So it's still a viable well? I'd like to believe so. I okay. haven't had it tested, uh, but certainly it's there, and it used to serve the residents. Okay, thanks. Councilor Gartano. Sure. Joe, I have a question for you. This is in regards to the rural internet. Um, you mentioned in your report here that the next meeting for the committee will be on February 6th, and that's when you will have the opportunity to review the letters of intent. Can you share an update on what you have heard so far with regards to potential um, providers? And, um, you know, are we getting interest? And I noticed also that you have one question that you received, which will be provided with a response by tomorrow. Could you share as well what kind of question you received? Um, it's been very quiet, unfortunately, relative to the request for proposals that was issued on January 2nd. I wish I could say that my phone was ringing off the hook. It's not. Um, at the last meeting of City Council two weeks ago, I mentioned that there were two emails that I received. Actually, one was um, they talked about it, but then ended up being in a a company that would help advertise the request for proposals, not necessarily offer service. So we've received one interest, a smaller company, I believe. Um, the questions related to uh, the funding component, and then would the RFP allow for service to the entire community? And certainly it would. Our priorities are in the underserved and unserved areas, but if a provider wanted to attempt to go into an area where other options exist, the RFP does not preclude that. Okay, and so appreciate the response on that. So the first part you mentioned, you haven't heard much at all, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming not even from our current providers in the area, which would be the Spectrum, the AT&Ts, or those that we have relationships already with, like Bayes and Whisper? Uh, Bayes ET had said previously, long before the issuance of the request for proposals, that they would submit a response. Whisper ISP is interested, but and they were the entity that submitted the questions. Um, the set of questions that will be responded to tomorrow, as you've mentioned. And when I talked with David Talbert of CTC Technology and Energy, he was wondering if Spectrum had contacted the city at any time yet. And I said, unfortunately, no, I've not heard from them. So everybody was hoping Spectrum would uh, engage early and often, but that hasn't been the case yet. Okay, Joe, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Councilor Werther. Thank you. Mr. Brown, I've got a question for you regarding the consultant agreement for the inspection of the small bridges and culverts. First and foremost, as these inspections go, especially for the bridges, knowing that we have traffic obviously traversing these, will, I'm assuming these bridges will be closed for a period of time while these inspections go on, or are these simply people going underneath the bridges to observe the, qual the quality or lack thereof of the supports? Um, <clears throat> generally, it's, at least to my knowledge, no, we do not close the road or the there's not a requirement or a need that we have to close the road. It's an inspection, primarily a visual inspection. So um, they'll go inside the culvert if they can do so and inspect it in that method. Um, but there's no need to close the road. You okay. probably won't know that we're doing it, quite frankly. Okay. Um, is it also possible to kind of to get a schedule of both uh, of the plans of when those which bridges will be addressed and at what time so that people can be made aware of that? I'm sure we could do that if that's the desire of the council, absolutely. It'd be a good mm -hmm. thing to have because I think it'll generate questions, obviously, both back to the city uh, as well as members of the council. 
no different than what we do with street slab replacement. That'd be no problem. Councillor Jordan. Shall I have a question for you, please? Thank you. So with respect to the RFP, does the department have planned as part of the process to reach out proactively to the recipients of the RFP and or is that part of the the scope? Uh, has CTC said anything about that being something that they would do? Based upon my last conversation with Mr. Talbert of CTC, I think that's going to be our next step if we don't receive the response we hope with the letters of intent that we'll start calling those on that list of about 90 different companies that may offer the best option for Wildwood. I'm hoping that CTC with their experience, um, their network of working with these providers and other communities will lead much of that because again, um, they'll talk the language better than the Department of Planning and I think it's important that if we don't get the interest we hope with the letters of intent that we try to do something to generate more interest then. And would it be um, appropriate or inappropriate for members of the REACT committee to assist in proactively reaching out to the? I would defer to the city attorney, but certainly if you know contacts that you would reach out to based upon your business or your um, your experience. Certainly, if you would provide those to the department, we could assist as well. We could follow up. We could make the initial contact. But again, I would defer to the city attorney on the original question. City Attorney Young. Uh, generally speaking, any time you're dealing with an RFP or a bid, you want to have a single point of contact. Moreover, you don't want to have a situation where you may have some discriminatory uh, circumstances where you've got uh, members of the body that will be determining who's going to be awarded a contract uh, interfering with the process as it may be deemed to be unfair or biased, which could lead to a potential uh, claim by an unsuccessful proposal. Even if it were limited just to at saying, hey, are you going to be responding to the RFP, encourage you to put your name in? Is that still tricky waters? I think it's tricky waters still, yes. Okay. But again, if Mr. Jackson, yourself, with your experience in the industry and being involved in it on a day-to-day -day basis, know of potential contacts, please send them to me. I'll pass them on to Mr. Talbert. Him and I will make the decision who should make the initial contact. We'll do whatever we can. I think CTC, as well as you know, the Department of Planning, along with the City Council, are committed to solving this problem as quickly as we can. Maybe and for the February 6th meeting, um, he could call in, or she could, Joanne. Certainly. I do want to emphasize Ms. Hovis, the principal and owner of the company, did review the RFP and made comments regarding it before it was issued. And advertised. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. Councillor McCutcheon. Yeah, Rick, I have a question on resolution two. What specific area for the um, rehabilitation and resurfacing of Manchester Road and Taylor Road? What are the locations? Um, so the city's project uh, would address Manchester Road. Essentially, it's the remaining section that is in need of resurfacing from. Uh, east of Old Fairway through Schnooks around to Route 100, um, you know, in front of Schnooks mm -hmm. and in front of the service station, that area. And then on Taylor Road, um, essentially from the roundabout, actually south of the roundabout, we've got an area that's distressed um, as you head into the, to the residential neighborhood. But um, the roundabout north on Taylor up to Manchester Road, that area we're looking at the best way to either resurface it or rehabilitate it, improve the smoothness. Um, we've got some issues with with some of the joints starting to to ravel, and we've, we've been doing some patches in that area, so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, any other questions for Joe, Rick, or others relative to any items? Uh, Joe, I have just one. On the uh, Town Center Update Team Progress Memo, 
you indicated that uh, you're anticipating completion before September of this year. Do you have anything more, uh, best guess, I understand we're not going to hold you to it, but do, do you have a, a, an idea as to exactly when that might be forthcoming? The, the, the ultimate result and recommendations. Mr. Mayor, if I was look look into my crystal ball, I believe we still have three working meetings left. Those will occur in February, March, and April. And then from there, I think May, June, and July will be our public outreach effort and finalizing the document. If all goes well, I hope to have something to um, City Council, the Planning and Zoning Commission in August. But again, um, meeting only once a month, it does limit our capability to turn things around a little quicker. I know they've had a lot to discuss, so. Yes. Thank we've, you. We've covered almost every line and, and paragraph and page in the plan up to this point. But I do believe as we get into the neighborhood design standards and the architectural guidelines, we'll probably move a little faster and, and hopefully um, get to that timeline I've just described. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Dodwell. Joe, before you walk away, I just want to pass along. I've had several comments from constituents <coughs> in my ward and a couple of other wards um, regarding concern about um, sticking with the original town center master plan and, and uh, making sure we do have a downtown area. Has the committee moved away from that or? Um, the town center update team did support changing the regulating plan for the two properties that are on tonight's public hearing. Mm -hmm. And along with that included eight others that are located on the east side of Etherton Road, north of Crestview Drive. Those properties are on the opposite side of the street from Canberry, mm -hmm. where there are residential homes fronting onto Etherton Road. Mm -hmm. At the last meeting, a week ago tomorrow, the Town Center Update team agreed not to change any more downtown district, and also are looking at expanding the allowances in the workplace district so as to make them maybe more appealing for both commercial type uses as well as residential uses. So um, I think they've made a commitment to the downtown district as it is after the 10 properties at Etherton Road and Crestview Drive, and also are looking at doing more with the workplace district. Thank you. Councilman Remy. Since you're there, um, yes, just since we have our next erosion committee meeting at the end of the month of next month, and we'll probably be voting on, is it possible to give two minutes of just the update on what we're doing in erosion, or would you prefer that to come from me? Uh, I, um, if you'd like to give an update, and I can fill in. So I don't want to. If the city attorney is okay with it, that's fine. Uh, city attorney, is it okay to do an update on an item like that that's not posted on the agenda? That's okay if we don't. That's fine. Yeah, it, just to be safe, I would prefer we didn't. Okay. That's all I'll say. I would say that the uh, Watershed Erosion Task Force has done a yeoman's job of sorting through reams and reams and reams of information and getting us to a point where come spring, we'll be out in the field. Okay, thank you. All right, anything further from any member of the council under, uh, uh, as to any item under information? All right, since we have no action items, uh, we will move to uh, the miscellaneous item, which is uh, Ms. McCutcheon. Or Joe, do you want to speak first to this? Yeah. Birch Forest Turnaround. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor and members of City Council, this particular roadway project should not be unknown to all of you. Um, at the end of the budget process in 2019, there was a discussion regarding the Birch Forest turnaround. Several things have happened as the villages at Brightleaf have developed in this area. 
One, almost immediately when the developer completed the secondary emergency access off the cul-de-sac onto the terminus of existing Birch Forest Drive, people started using it. Despite the fact that there were barricades and different types of obstructions there, we found that despite our best efforts and the developer's best efforts, people began utilizing it for that purpose. Secondly, the area also had experienced a high level of disturbance in association with the cul-de-sac and the preparation of the grades on either side, one for a detention retention basin and the other for building construction, new homes. And so what that all came to eventually was is that there had to be a better way to approach this particular location. At the budget meetings, it was clear that this was not a project that would be budgeted as, as part of the 2020 capital improvements program, but would be reviewed later in the year as we began the, the process of initiating projects that had been budgeted, seeing where we were as we went through those based upon bidding efforts, and then potentially doing the project if one bid came in and extra money was available. Tonight, the city administrator, Mr. Brown, our director of public works, and I are just giving you an update in terms of the process to date. The department did give you an overview of the process previously as part of those budget discussions that have been mentioned in that there are several steps in this process, completing the engineered plans for bidding purposes, completing the agreement with the homeowners association, i.e. the developers, for the use of the common ground area for this turnaround, and then ultimately bidding the project so it can be constructed. Nothing moves as fast as we hope, but we have completed the review of the plans. The engineering firm Cochrane and the engineer that prepared the plans is working on the comments that were provided to you as part of tonight's packet. We expect to have those corrected plans back in February, <coughs> and then we'll present them again to City Council to gauge their support of the design and it's as close to final as possible. Thereafter, we'll begin the process again of looking at options for funding as we approach mid-year. But certainly, if there is available money, the department will identify that and advise City Council at the appropriate time. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Member McCutcheon, do you want to speak to this at all? I did speak with the residents um, at the end of Birch Forest, and they are um, in compliance with the plan. Um, they look forward to this coming to um, construction and completion as fast as possible. Um, we can't even put up a tree screen to block the view from the, uh, from villages of Brightleaf until this until this construction takes place and is completed. Um, so I would appreciate it if um, the council will support the construction of this just as soon as funding is found. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dodwell. Since I'm not on the uh, um, public works committee anymore, I'm just trying to read this a little bit more clearly, Joe. Um, sure. Are they talking about, I see the hatched area. Are you talking about turning that into a turnaround for <coughs> the villages of Brightleaf and having two turnarounds abut each other with something in between? Is that what I'm seeing here? Well, kind of, but not exactly. OK. Both Mr. Brown and I commented, we for such a small area, we've got a lot of lines and a lot of information packed onto a small sheet of paper. Yes, you do, but that's OK. Um, but there's a bit of a history. Uh, when the Evergreen subdivision developed under St. Louis County, their practice, as is appropriate, is that if a stub street was created, they would create a temporary turnaround. Mm -hmm. And that's the larger hatch pattern on Birch Forest Drive. Okay. That exists today. It's an asphalt surface. Mm -hmm. It's been there for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. And it's intended to serve as a de facto turnaround until such time the Stub Street is extended or other alternatives are provided. And there are no homes around that? There sure is. There's actually two on either were. side. 
And so the temporary asphalt turnaround extends into their front yards. There's uh -huh. an easement for it, yeah. but it extends into their front yard. Under this plan, that temporary turnaround area on both sides of the street would be removed. And it would be then seeded or sodded and turned into turf so it could be maintained. What would be left is the gray area further to the south of that larger hatched zone. And that is the hammerhead or the half hammerhead that would act as the turnaround. And that would be just for birch forest users, not the villages at Brightly. Okay. And they would pull through or pull in and back out again? Yes, there's a bit of a maneuver to it, but okay. according to our engineer and our director of public works, we think it's going to work okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was reading this correctly. I ended up, when we purchased our property out here, we had the same hatched area in oh, okay. part of our property as well and until the next subdivision got built. So yeah. I'm familiar with what you're dealing with. And hopefully if the process worked well, the developer of the next subdivision <coughs> took that out and restored the area for you. Yes, he did. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, we're all okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, you. All right, so council members, that's the only item uh, remaining uh, under miscellaneous. Um, that takes us to adjournment. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn the work session made by Councilmember Dodwell, second by Councilmember Stevens? Non debatable, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we're adjourned. We will start the council meeting at exactly 7 o'clock. Thank you.
worse. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at the uh, Hi. Good. How are you? I'm fine. Oh. Thanks for asking. <laughs> My thing is going. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. <laughs> the dental business going? Good. Yeah. 
you do. You're leaving. I know. I just can't do it another two years. You know, it's it's like I have I work so much and I need to have a life, a happy part of my life. This hasn't been a real happy part. Okay, that's good. But I'll still be your friend. <laughs> I'll still be your friend if you'll let me. Friend, <laughs> yeah. You're good. Thank you. You're doing a good job. Well, I hate that I right, probably gave too. the mayor a happy dance. But. Yeah.
Say good evening. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the City Council for the City of Wildwood for Monday, January 27, 2020. Uh, Ms. Lobeck, would you please call the roll? Mayor Bolin? Here. Councilmember Stevens? Here. Councilmember McCune? Here. Councilmember Bope? Present. Councilmember Bertolino? Councilmember Dodwell? Present. Councilmember Remy? Present. Councilmember Edens? Here. Councilmember Brost? Here. Councilmember Garitano? Present. Councilmember Werther? Present. Councilmember Jordan? Here. Councilmember McCutcheon? Here. Councilmember Farmer? Here. Councilmember Dillard? Here. Councilmember Bartoni? Here. Councilmember Gregnani? Here. Okay, thank you, and welcome everyone. Uh, to those of you that are with us this evening, thank you for being here. If you have a cell phone or other electronic device that is on, if you would please uh, turn the volume to silent while we're in the meeting, we would appreciate it. And uh, for those of you that are comfortably able, if you would please stand with us as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of minutes from the January 13, 2020 uh, Council Work Session and regular meeting. Uh, if there are no questions on the minutes, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. We have a Councilmember McCune, seconded by Councilmember Farmer. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, next, uh, public participation. I just want to mention that this is a valuable component of our meeting. Anyone who wishes to speak must complete a speaker card and provide it to the city clerk who is seated to your left of the podium. When your name is called, please approach the podium and state your name and ward. To ensure that all who wish to speak have the opportunity to do so, there is a five-minute time limitation, and I will let you know when the time limit is reached. If you have any questions for us, please mention that during your remarks and identify the official you would like to respond. That official will make note of it, and at the conclusion of public participation, any official who chooses to respond will have three minutes to do so as to all questions directed to that official. The official may choose to respond to your questions after tonight's meeting, and we may post also post any responses on the City Council page of our website. And finally, please be respectful uh, in, uh, to others in making your remarks. Uh, this means interrupting others and using profane and abusive language are prohibited. And I want to thank everyone in advance for following these. First speaker card, please. Eileen Merrick, Ward 1. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Eileen Merrick, Ward 1. Uh, I live in Wild Horse Valley subdivision. So that's off of Wild Horse Creek Road. And that is west of Babbler State Park. And to give you another, just in case you're not familiar with us, uh, that's about six miles south of the junction of Wild Horse Creek Road, uh, Centaur, and 109. Um, we have in our, on our road approximately 20 residents. And as I said, we back up to Wild Horse Creek Road. Um, of our 20 residents, uh, we have about 85% of us who are around the age of 60 or, or older. Uh, we have one individual who uh, uses ambulatory service probably once a month, maybe once every two months. And I say this because, as some of you might understand, where we are, we have a flooding issue. And that means that, uh, that from time to time, we cannot leave our subdivision. Um, we, are, we are held hostage. And um, we have to hope that we are all members of fair weather injuries. We got to hope that none of us get sick, that none of us fall, that no one goes into a heart attack when there's a flood because there's no way to get an ambulance to us. Possibly a, a helicopter could get to us, uh, but we also know that that's hugely costly and uh, that then becomes a, a, a more dramatic for the family. Um, the, as everyone also probably knows, 219 was the year of major flooding. 
and we had serious problems on Wild Horse Creek Road, and especially in the parameters that I'm talking about. So I am um, south of Centaur Bridge, going toward where the new bridge that the city of Wildwood installed on Wild Horse Creek Road. And in that area, there are several bes people besides us that are waterlogged and cannot get out. My husband and I, who is here tonight, we decided to do something about it, and we took pictures. And we documented the damage that occurred during the major flooding that, that happened. Um, we developed the pictures, we put it on a thumb drive, and then we uh, asked people from Babbler State Park to meet with us at our road. Um, at that time, unfortunately, the site manager of Babbler State Park had died, so the regional manager came and met with us, but he also brought personnel from uh, Babbler State Park. We piled them into our vehicle and we rode up and down. We pointed out the damages. We pointed out the issues. We showed them the erosions on the bank. We showed them where trees had fallen and we showed them where all the dams occurred for all the wood that had piled up from years and years and years of a fallen tree policy that the state had been utilizing. And the fallen tree policy is just that. When a tree falls, you leave it. And so what happened on Wild Horse Creek Road was, or Wild Horse Creek, was that every time a tree fall, fell and a water came, the trees started to form dams, large dams, dams that, that could not be, uh, the water couldn't hardly penetrate them. I had friends coming in from St. Louis, and they kept going, wow, the beavers in this area are tremendous. And I said, no, no, that's not a beaver. Um, that's, that's the wood all piling up. So I brought this to the attention of Babbler, and Babbler took it away with all my documentation. And I said, I want us to meet in January. And January we did. We met. And they came to us with, yes, we will help you. We've cleaned out some culverts. We've, we've got some plans, but, and here's the but, the but is we have one small dump truck and we have one small bobcat and we have few workers. And I said, well, we're an elderly population. I don't know that we can do a lot of volunteering. And I said, what about the city of Wildwood? Is there any collaboration that can be done? Because we need help, erosion control, cleaning up the banks, there's tons and tons of debris that just lays right beside Wild Horse Creek Road, and that's going to come onto the road again, and it's going to create road hazards, vehicle hazards, uh, property damage, and again, there are people who have fences and property along that road that's already seen severe damage. So they are willing to help, and they have a 2021 budget that they are going to put some money in. And I have talked to them about contracting services to help us. But I've also asked them to contact the city of Wildwood. They said they have made a preliminary. And I hope the city of Wildwood can help to collaborate with Babbler State Park and doing some of this cleanup because, again, it's your city of Wildwood residents that are impacted. It's an emergency situation for us. And we are sitting there trapped unless emergency information uh, equipment can get to us and they can't questions or am i done uh this is just your time okay. uh yes miss merrick and thank you for that appreciate thank you. it okay thank you. appreciate everyone's time uh-huh no problem next speaker card please dennis Crouch. i am dennis Crouch. i live in Baldwin, Missouri. I'm a member of the church council at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We're, at, we're in Ward 3, and I wanted to give a little uh, background as to why we submitted a second boundary adjustment plat for our property. It's for two lots we own, parcel A, which has our church and cemetery, and parcel B, which has a small house on it that we rent out. The original boundary adjustment plat 
was to modify property lines so we could build a new code compliant septic sewer system because our existing septic system failed. When that drawing was recorded with the county, they recorded both property, our parcel A and parcel B as taxable real estate. So we prepared a second boundary adjustment plat that has a small flag lot on it to go around the small area that we leased to a cell tower company on parcel A. That flag lot is joined to parcel B. That way all of our taxable real estate will be on parcel B. Then we can go to the county for reapplication of our tax exempt status for parcel A, which has our church and cemetery. Also, if time permits, we'd request um, two readings tonight. And the reason is we're just anxious to get started on our reapplication for tax exemption on parcel A. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker card, please. Susan Seibert, Ward 8. Challenged a little bit. Good evening, everyone. My name is Susan Seibert, and I'm from Ward 8. And I also sit on um, the Wildwood Celebration Committee for Ward 8. And I just wanted you to know, it's a great committee, and the eight members who represent each of the wards really enjoy working with the city staff to come up with two great events. One, the celebration of our city, and the second, the art fair. And unfortunately, this year, two of the members have decided to pursue other interests. So there are two openings, one I believe for Ward 3 and one for Ward 4. And uh, the Ward 3 candidate is Karen Stevens. I've met her. She's a very, very nice person. And I wanted you all to know that our committee would welcome her. And I'm sure she'll provide a lot of good ideas. So thank you for letting me speak. And Thank you to the city of Wildwood for helping us do such a great job for the residents. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker card, please. There are no more speaker cards. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and thanks to those of you who came to speak uh, this evening during public participation. Uh, moving next to mayor announcements and appointments, we have three appointments. Uh, the first is Karen Stevens. Um, for the Wildwood Celebration Commission. Uh, this was postponed from the last meeting, and uh, council members, you have my memo on this, so if you have any questions, entertain those. Otherwise, I would ask for a motion to approve the appointment made by Council Member Remy. Is there a second? Second by Council Member Garitano. Uh, council Member Remy. So I'm uh, supporting Ms. Stevens tonight for this position, so just to let everyone know, and Ms. Siebert, that was fantastic as a segue. This is a charter-specific commission that was a, started in 1997, reaffirmed in 2008, with a purpose to organize and conduct the Wildwood Celebration event each year and manage its budget. <clears throat> I first met Ms. Stevens a little under a year ago um, when she heard me speak at a council meeting and uh, came and, and told me that she would uh, like to talk to me and furthermore understand a little bit more why I was running for city council. She was always respectful. She was polite. She was well measured, and she understood a lot of the different issues that were occurring in the city of Wildwood. I understood a lot about her at that time, and she told me, and I learned a little bit more about her. She's a medical sales professional with 33 years of experience. She's got a concentration in startup sales, program development, forecasting, physician marketing, territory creation, sales training, strategic business development, operations training, and cost reduction. She graduated with honors with an MBA in marketing. She's focused in creating marketing collateral and a num number of different things with sales at the CEO level. Furthermore, this past year and the year before, for the entire company, she won salesperson of the year. In fact, la at the last meeting, she was in Mexico receiving an award. This is a citizen we should be honoring. Furthermore, the citizens of Garden Valley Homeowners Association which is a homeowners association made up of over 175 homes, have vetted her 
and she's been their trustee this past year. That so I think that speaks to the neighbors that know her best who have made her a trustee. She's always been respectful, always been polite, always been considerate, and emphatically, I, I think she's the best person to sit for this position, and I will support her. Hey, thank you, and I neglected to mention my apology. Uh, she is, Ms. Stevens, with us this evening. Thank you for being here. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion, uh, roll call vote, please, to approve the motion to approve Council Member, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Karen Stevens to the Wildwood Celebration Commission. Council Member Stevens? Yes. Council Member McCune? Abstain. Council Member Boat? Yes. Council Member Ber no, excuse me. <laughs> Council Member Dodwell? Yes. Council Member Remy? Yes. Council Member Edens? Yes. Council Member Brost? Yes. Council Member Garitano? Yes. Council Member Werther? No. Council Member Jordan? Abstain. Council Member McCutcheon? Yes. Council Member Farmer? Yes. Council Member Dillard? No. Council Member Bartoni? Yes. Council Member Gregnani? Abstain. Okay, motion carries, thank you. And congratulations, Ms. Stevens, and thank you for being willing to serve our city, and welcome to the team. Next, uh, also to the Wildwood Celebration Commission, is Ms. Sharon Hudson, uh, representing Ward 4. Uh, you have uh, the memo on that as well, and I neglected to mention that she has actually previously served um, in a leadership capacity with respect to the art fair, so she uh, comes with uh, knowledge relative to this. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, this appointment. Made by Councilmember Dodwell, seconded by Councilmember Farmer. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dodwell? Yes. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? <clears throat> Yes. Council Member Garitano? Yes. Council Member Werther? No. Council Member Jordan? Yes. Council Member McCutcheon? Yes. Council Member Farmer? Yes. Council Member Dillard? No. Council Member Bartoni? Yes. Council Member Gregnani? Yes. Okay, motion also carries and uh, congratulations. I'm sorry. Council Member Stevens? Yes. So sorry. No worries, Ms. Lobeck. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right. Okay. Uh, and congratulations, uh, Ms. Hudson, and thank you for your willingness to be part of this important group. And I want to welcome you to our team as well. Thank you. And last, in terms of appointments, is Mr. Anthony uh, Galtney from Ward 8 to the Erosion Task Force. This takes care uh, of a, this is a replacement for a resignation uh, that occurred. He is with us here this evening. You also have my memorandum for him. Uh, Councilor Garitano. I'd like to make a motion to, to approve the yes. appointment. Is there a second? Seconded by uh, Councilmember Remy. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dodwell? Yes. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? Yes. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Werther? No. Councilmember Jordan? Yes. Councilmember McCutcheon? Yes. Councilmember Farmer? Yes. Councilmember Dillard? No. Councilmember Bartoni? Yes. Councilmember Gregnani? Yes. Council, Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Galtney, thank you for being here this evening and for your willingness to be part of another important. Uh, group for our city that's dealing with a very important issue. We heard some of those issues going on, speaking to the people we're speaking to this evening. And so thank you again um, for doing that and be, being part of our team. Welcome. Look forward to working with you. you. Councilmember Greg Nani. May I ask a quick special favor? Would I don't remember the date. Would Dr. Remy give the date of the next erosion control meeting? There are two people in the audience, now Mr. Galtney and one of the speakers who would like to hear that date, if you would mind. Sure. Unless, unless February 26th. February 26th. February 26th. That's 6:30. Okay, and when... Councilmember Edens. Yes. In the meantime, if you go to the website under the Creek Erosion Task Force, there is a way to submit um, your address. I don't know where they're sitting anymore. Um, and 
Yes, and uh, go ahead and upload your pictures. And if you have any other video documentation, and we'll save that as a city. And if the city shares us, we'll have we'll have time to review that the before the next meeting. So. Okay. Thank you. Just in addition, everyone has received something probably in the mail that's got a little scannable. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving next to public hearings, PZ five five uh, A and five B dash eighteen. Uh, Ms. Lobeck, would you please read that? P PZ 5, 5A, and 5B, 18 Latitude N38, TB Realty and Development, Inc., in care of Tony Bosworth, 2642 State Route 109, Wildwood, Missouri, 63040. A request for modifications to the Town Center regula Regulating Plans designation of two properties that total 2.84 acres of area, which are located at the southeast corner of Etherton Road and Crestview Drive, from their current categories as Downtown District to the Neighborhood Edge District. Accompanying the aforementioned regulating plan modifications is a request for a change in zoning from the NU Non-Urban Residence District to the R4 7,500 square foot residence district, Town Center Neighborhood Edge District, with a planned residential development overlay district for the same tract of land, again being located at the southeast corner of Etherton Road and Crestview Drive, Locator numbers 23V210140 and 23V210151. Street addresses 2442 and 2448 Etherton Road. Proposed use, a total of 12 detached single family dwellings with common ground and required public space areas. Joe, do you have anything you'd like to mention relative to these? <clears throat> Yes, Mr. Mayor, the department has a brief presentation for our City Council and those in attendance. Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council, the Planning and Zoning Commission has provided for your consideration tonight its letter of recommendation regarding the three requests that form this particular petition. As the Assistant City Clerk just noted for the record, there is a regulating plan change associated with this particular property because it is located in town center there is a rezoning request and then the overlay district in association with the zoning change this particular property is located at what is described as the southeast corner of crestview drive and etherton road abutting to the west across etherton road is main street crossing to the northwest is a portion of Main Street Crossing and the Cambury subdivision. And to the north, east, and south are existing lots that predate the establishment of Wildwood. Many of them are, were platted many, many years ago in the 60s and 70s. The Planning and Zoning Commission was asked to consider these particular requests and did recommend favorably and acted upon the regulating plan change. These two properties were designated downtown district and now are designated neighborhood general district by the action of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Accompanying that action, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended favorably for the change in zoning of the property and the use of the overlay district in association with that change in zoning district designation. The outcome of those recommendations and action is a 12-lot single-family residential subdivision. The dwellings will not be attached but detached, and each will be on a lot of record. Eight of the 12 proposed single-family detached dwellings are served by alleys, while the remaining four, the four along the eastern boundary, will have front entry garages. As part of the Planning and Zoning Commission's review, they, the members, required a number of conditions associated with the use of the three-acre site. Those conditions are reflected in attachment B of the report. The conditions address the neighborhood design standards of the town center plan. It, they also address stormwater management requirements. 
And in this particular case, the, uh, a very important aspect, the roadway improvements. Etherton Road is to be improved similarly to what Main Street Crossing and the Cambrai subdivisions have been required and completed. And in the case of Crestview Drive, the developer is required to dedicate approximately 40 feet of land area for its future development. A major extraction in terms of square footage for the purposes of future Main Street. An interesting aspect that the Planning and Zoning Commission required of this developer is that the stormwater basin be underground. Therefore, the area where the basin is located can be planted, used for green space, a lawn area, and active use by the residents of the subdivision. The last aspect that the Planning and Zoning Commission would like the City Council to understand is that as part of this 18-month process, this matter was referred to the Town Center Update Team. The Planning and Zoning Commission requested their input on this particular regulating plan change and ultimately by a vote of 13 to 2, the Town Center Update Team recommended the regulating plan be changed to accommodate this use. Key in its reasons was that the land use pattern on Etherton Road on both sides should be retained as residential, not residential on the west side of the road, and downtown district on the east. Subsequently, the Town Center Update team made it clear that beyond these two properties and eight others to the north and to the northwest, which would be residential instead of downtown district, the remaining downtown district area should, be, should not be altered and be retained for future utiliza utilization as such. Our economic development manager provided a report on this matter and concurred with that action of the Town Center Update Team and now the Planning and Zoning Commission. Again, the Planning and Zoning Commission has granted the regulating plan change to the Town Center Plan and are recommending favorably to the City Council the zoning change and the use of the overlay district. After public comment, the department will be available to answer any questions regarding this matter. And as always, the council liaison, Mr. Werther, and the mayor serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission and can also provide input if the city council should seek such. And thank you. Thank you, Joe. Do you have any speaker cards? Katie Dodwell for Jean Vedvig, Ward 4. <coughs> Good evening, Council. I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that this is Jean Vedvig's words, not Katie Dodwell's words. As Council Member, I felt it was uh, important that since she could not be here this evening, that I read the document that she has prepared and she has provided directly to me and then it goes into the permanent record so that you know what Jean Vedvig is thinking about this particular um, plan that has been put forward before us tonight. So this is going to the Wildwood City Council and the Mayor, the City Clerk and Director of Planning regarding the Latitude 38 PZ5, 5A, and 5B-18. To all, the subject site is 2.86 acres in the downtown district. Request is 12 lots on less than three acres. A concrete wall will be built on what will be Main Street. This development turns its back on one of the, our most expensive and important streets. The planning director has brought a message from the TCUT about the regulating plan. However, it has not completed the work assigned by the city council. A recommendation is not a final action. This change from downtown to neighborhood edge only moves the question of residential to downtown two lots to the east. The city will again be faced with the not next to me transition. It has been stated, this will never develop as downtown. As Crestview sits today, I would agree. As a private street with no connection to Main Street to the east, agreed. Another criteria discussed was low traffic in the area. Again today, this is a private street which dead ends at Main Street, hence low traffic. 
The City Council used taxpayers' dollars to purchase lots with a vision of a green space for residents' use. Along with the two lots, a connecting strip of land was purchased to allow for the development of the Main Street connection from City Hall property west. This provides a favorable environment for the future development of the downtown district. If you take that opportunity away, it's not that it will not happen, it cannot happen. Why would you purchase these three properties with taxpayers' dollars if you did not have a vision of building an environment for the future development of the town center downtown district? If you accept this change to the town center plan, which will provide services for our community, you will take away another piece of the vision to build downtown center as a destination. A community without a vision and dedication will be a location on a map. Respectfully, Jean Vedvig, 16709 Clayton Road, Wildwood, Missouri, 63011. And again, I want to reiterate, these are her thoughts and not mine. Thank you. And in that regard, uh, my recollection is in the last 48 hours or so, we've received uh, other comments uh, by uh, email from citizens. Uh, would you, Joe, or um, the assistant city clerk be able to summarize those? My recollection is they were all in favor except for one, I believe, that I could be wrong. But I think it, uh, out of fairness, we should summarize those as well. We have six comments. Two were did not support and four did. Okay, so out of so six comments, two did not and four did. Okay, right. thank you. All right, any questions from any member of the council um, for Mr. Vintage? Councilor McCune. Just on the comments, if I can ask, sorry, is this one? Um, the ones that did not, what is their opposition? Can I ask that since uh, Ms. Vedvig got to explain why she's opposing it? If there's two comments, what is their concern? So those were sent to the council by email, but she can summarize those. If, I mean, some of, the, some of them were lengthy. I never received any of them. Just one second. Just one. Um, well, that's okay. We'll we'll go ahead. Um, if you could just, I mean, some of them were lengthy, but um, if you could just, uh, it might be better for Joe to do that since he's familiar with uh, the project. Joe, if you could just in a sentence or so summarize the the, the comments, pro and con. Certainly, sir. Um, of the two that are in opposition, the first is I would like to see more downtown like buildings or high density housing. That's the extent of the suggestion and for the most part the comment itself. The other being in opposition said too many homes on such a small piece of land. If this is changed to neighborhood edge and what from what from stopping other developers from buying up the other property and cramming in other homes i'm not against residential but less homes on larger lots would be better six homes instead of 12. Okay. and do you want to summarize those in favor as well or I'd be glad to um the first is support um, gentleman lives on Fawcett Drive but did not provide any written comments in association with his support. The other is another uh, individual that lives on Fawcett Drive but a different address on Fawcett Drive. They support it but there was no comments associated with their submittal. The third of the four again support uh, another person on Fawcett Drive uh, different address again and no comments, but support is identified. And then the final is a, a fourth person on Fawcett Drive, all different addresses, so not the same parties or party. Um, in their comments, thank you for the opportunity to comment. We're residents of Ward 8, Main Street Crossing, and we support the change in zoning to Neighborhood Edge in order to preserve the existing single home, home environment instead of commercial business retail that could be possible with current zoning. It would be nice to see new modern ranch style homes on these parcels of ground. Okay, thank you. Councilor Garitano. Yeah, I'd be happy to share with the council what I have heard 
So as you see in your packet, um, there are 10 comments in support and two opposing it. And then also in the room here, we have seven people uh, that I am aware that are supporting this plan. And so the feedback I've gotten is that from the residents over there, their perspective, uh, they would like to see some consistency with the residential being on one side and also being on the other side. And I think that was something that was clearly noted by the Department of Planning that they would support that. Uh, also, the, um, the idea that this would allow or get us closer to opening up Main Street uh, is a positive for the community there. So I know that that has been a comment that has come up. With regards to the um, density, um, 2.8 acres, 12 homes, that's roughly, I think what I was calculating was I think 0.23. Um, which is consistent with the Canberry neighborhood right next to it, which is 46 homes that were in the addition over 11.4 acres, and they were 0.24 acres per home. So the, if, if I believe that's the department, is that those numbers sound right? I know you probably need to refer to it, but that's what I've been able to pull up. Generally speaking, I would say about four units per acre. Four units. So that, that would be about right. Yeah, four units would be about 0.25. So these are just about right there under it. So uh, the comments I've heard, and also to be fair to the comments that were opposing it, some of these same issues that have been brought up in the opposition would be issues we would hear about again when a commercial proposal would come forth on this property regarding traffic, uh, regarding, uh, I think traffic was probably one of those that was clearly stated. Uh, getting us closer to opening up Main Street Will actually probably help with the traffic. Uh, I know Main Street's very important for our city and we are trying to work on that so I think this helps us because we have a community park, oh, not excuse me, let me rephrase that. We have a uh, six acre parcel that we have acquired back in 2018 for Village Green but if we can't get people to it then it does not really help us at this time so I think the Main Street piece is a key piece there and uh, that's my summary of what I've heard. Thank you, Councilmember Edens. Yes, I just wanted to clarify. So the public comments that we received in the packet were from December 1st, 2nd, November, and before. So what we just discussed were ones we haven't seen from 48 hours before. So yes, I'm aware that there are comments on page 51, but that's not what we've seen. So if possible, if we could get those emailed out just for our records, that, that would be great. Thank you. Councilor McCune. Uh, I'll pass. I'm good. Councilor Stevens. Um, so I guess if you look at T-Cut's uh, recommendation to go from strictly commercial to it's a mixed use. So um, for all those properties, Neighborhood General does provide for both residential or commercial. That's correct, right? Yes, but the context of commercial is part of a residential building. So you cannot have a standalone commercial building. You can only have commercial uses on the first floor if there are residential floors above. For the neighborhood general, I thought that uh, the regulating plan said that there could be flower shops and bakeries and things um, like that. In the, within in the, the context of that single building, yes, on the first floor it can be low-impact commercial type uses, but there always has to be a residential component. Okay, um, and uh, I guess there's two ways to look at it. One, uh, there was some talk about rezoning more of those properties as residential, and so what Town Center Update Team did was cut it off at that eastern boundary of this property, um, and and that was really the point when when I was on the committee to save the commercial space around the future Village Green. So you can look at it two ways. Are you changing zoning to allow for residential or are you saving zoning to, to make sure that it stays commercial for the, for the Village Green? Um, one, I did have, TCUT didn't look at the proposal itself. We just looked at the regulating plan. I know there was some question at planning and zoning and when you get to the site development process about the screen walls and I guess, how does that go with everything else that we've seen in town center when it comes to having consistency in in the look of town center 
Um, it's an integral part of the streetscape as well as the development. So both the Planning and Zoning Commission and our Architectural Review Board will be able to review, comment, and change if necessary the screen walls that might be proposed along Main Street. Okay, yeah, is there any concern, I guess, because those would face north, and I know an, a north-facing wall is always subject to more mold, mildew, spider webs, all those types of things. Um, any concern from you on that it's aspect? A, it's a very good point, and we'll make sure that the petitioner, if the project is ultimately approved, is aware of that and chooses a material that has less of a likelihood than more. Okay, and then on the street improvements for Main Street, I know that in the packet it says that the requirements could be this, it could be that. What is the, I guess, normal set of standards that Wildwood would require the developer to build out on Main Street? Um, one half of full construction. Okay, and, and is that going to be required out of this, or is that at the discretion of the planning and zoning and council, or how does that work? It's at the discretion of Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council. Um, at this stage, we're not saying it would be a full build-out of half the right-of-way. Given the magnitude of that improvement for 12 lots and a three-acre site, we're looking at certain pedestrian improvements consistent with the streetscape and street requirements of Town Center Plan, and then obviously some of the furniture and street lights we need to investigate we can escrow part of it and use that escrow then to construct the street when um, the appropriate time uh, ex exists and then would the developer have to apply for public finance incentives to if we're not going to require the full half of construction would they have to apply for public finance incentives to get I guess a variance on on those requirements the petitioner has not mentioned any um, interest in public finance incentives or anything along those lines. He has requested some leniency on the Main Street improvements, but does intend to build all of the improvements on Etherton Road. And then what's the requirement on the public space? And I don't know if I missed that or not, but do, are they meeting the requirements for the public space? Yes, the public space requires roughly about 1,740 square feet for each of the 12 units, which equates roughly to about an acre plus. So the stormwater detention area will count toward public space. Um, the improvements, uh, pedestrian improvements, do not along Etherton Road and Main Street. And so we'll be looking for other alternatives or a fee in lieu of. Okay, and that... that detention is a 40 is that 40 feet um width is that correct so that'll th would that all be public space or would that some portion be cordoned off for the residents that live there uh, stormwater management facilities under the clean water act are a one-to-one -one credit one square foot is credited toward one square foot of required public space and so regardless if it's underground or above ground that would have been a full creditable charge okay um and i I guess the only other question was since uh, Crestview is a private street and it's owned not just by one individual, correct? It's owned by the whole lot. Is that right? That's correct. And then how does that work with, uh, I mean, I guess an individual can give up their rights to the street. Is that where we're at? So like he would just be giving up one portion of the street? Um, since Crestview Drive exists in a parcel of ground, Crestview Drive is a parcel of ground. The dedication the city is receiving as part of the requested rezoning will be land area outside that parcel of ground. And so does Mr. Bosworth relinquish his rights? I think that's a great question for the city attorney. City Attorney Young. Based on my understanding of the deed and the fact that there is no subdivision association or other contract, I don't believe there's any relinquishment of right by the current property owner upon this, any sale or divestiture of the lot. So would he still own his part of the... I don't... The lot, the, the street is a separate piece of property with multiple owners. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Jordan. 
I'd like to hear um, what Council Member Werther has to say about it as liaison to PNC. Thank you. I appreciate that. Council Member Werther. The, um, th throughout this particular process, um, one thing's been known, uh, both the members of planning and zoning, maybe not all the members of the public, but that was the acquisition of the six acres that have become or will become the Village Green. By acquiring those six acres, the city essentially increased the valuation of all surrounding properties. Um, as if you study village greens around, whether from up in the northeast to out west, you find that village greens are surrounded in many, many cases by commercial properties, commercial interests, and commercial entities. With our main street anchoring uh, our downtown our commercial property downtown district commercial properties uh, to me it made no sense to go ahead and essentially give away some of the, what we considered downtown district properties by changing the regulating plan for those properties I need to remind everybody it's not just these three acres we're talking about it's talking about a number of properties a total of uh, eight or eight or nine that make up a number of properties that the town center update team has decided to change. Um, so to me, it made no sense to go ahead and actually make the changes from downtown to neighborhood general. It made more sense, quite frankly, if we wanted to try and transition it to go from downtown perhaps to workplace, but not, not as far as it's going at this particular point in time. That's so why my votes, you know, from the first one in July of 2018 to the last one of January of 2020 have all been against making this particular change. So, anything further, Council Member Jordan, Council Member Remy? Just two questions. If this is a private street, this will, the, the the developer will be responsible, or the homeowners will be responsible for snow removal. Um, eventually, if all goes well. The dedication as part of this particular project is to the public, the city of Wildwood, and any improvements in the public right of way will be maintained by the city, like the rest of Main Street. And then, do you have a current color rendering of what the outside facade is going to look like for any of these? I, I don't see it in the packet. I believe the petitioner has one, if I could beg the pardon sure. of the mayor. Uh, while he's getting those, uh, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission, in its uh, motion uh, approving of, of moving forward with this, requested that the design be reviewed specifically by the Ar Ar Architectural Review uh, Committee relative to the um, blending, if you will, of the homogenous, na homogenous nature of this particular, uh, you know, the look, the aesthetics of this particular development with other developments um, surrounding it in our city, just for your information. And so that has been placed uh, on the overhead. Um, Council Member, I, mean. I, I do want to mention that the Planning and Zoning Commission was concerned about the architectural style of these proposed, these 12 proposed single family dwellings. The department has been able to schedule the Architectural Review Board to meet on, I believe, February 12th or 13th. Don't hold me to that, 13th. And we will be looking at these specific renderings and other information regarding their style. So before a final passage is made by the City Council, if a bill is introduced, you will know what the Architectural Review Board's opinion is on this particular development. Okay, thank you. And relative to action, before we go back to Councilman Remy, Joe, since you're there at the uh, podium, um, is there anything in particular you're, you would be looking for from the Council this evening? Yes, the Department, based upon the Planning and Zoning Commission's action, is respectfully requesting authorization to prepare the necessary re legislation to proceed forward. Okay. Councilmember Remy, anything further? All right. Councilmember McCutcheon? Um, yeah, I was one of the two no votes uh, on changing the zoning on this property. And uh, the biggest reason is the density. Um, the other, there was a question of access. Um, I believe part of the residents will only be able to have access through the alleyway. Um, that was part of the discussion. So, other than roads located here, the alley will serve these four plus these four. Yeah. The 
plants of these homes face onto a new public street, and these will be front entry onto a public street that accesses Main Street or via this alley at the road. So although the certain number of the units, eight of the 12, will not access Etherton Road or Main Street, they will access a alley of private nature or public street. And so the, the additional question that I have is, so the alley that is going to be private will then be maintained by those residents and that includes snow removal? Yes, the alleys under the town center plan are to be privately dedicated and maintained by the homeowners association the town center update team does have a recommendation that eventually will work its way to planning and zoning and city council saying that they believe alley should be public as well but that recommendation has not yet been presented to either of those bodies correct but my largest objection was the density um it, it's it's the public has been um, repeatedly saying they want less dense density in the city of Wildwood, and this is not a less dense um, project. Councilor Dillard. I agree with that statement, um, but I have a couple of questions. I notice in the, the history, so to speak, uh, in the packet of this, um, that on July 16th, 2018, P and Z uh, killed it. Denial of, of regulating plan change. Uh, by a vote of uh, six to four. Less than a month later, on August 20th, 2018, it was uh, approved for a motion to reconsider, to bring this back up, and that won by a vote of five to four. So um, I guess I have a question for you, and then I think I have a question for um, probably Council Member Werther as well. Is this, I mean, how often does something like this get reconsidered so quickly? It's a very good question, Councilman. Dillard in that most of the actions of the Planning and Zoning Commission aren't as close as these were six mm -hmm. to four five to four seven to three Oftentimes they're either unanimous or one or two members may vote right. against the majority I think that's the particular reason it was Reconsidered is that the vote was that close six to four a matter of just the, the minimum majority and to the benefit of the Planning and Zoning Commission, they sent it to Town Center Update Team to allow them an opportunity to consider it as part of the overall mm -hmm. regulating plan discussion. Okay. Well, I wish we could all have a do-over when we have a close vote sometimes. Um, but, uh, Councilman Werther, you were there. I wonder if you would have any insight as to why that was uh, overturned. Without objection, Councilmember Werther. Um, in terms of the question about reconsideration, um, it is unusual that reconsiderations occur uh, it, it, on close votes, perhaps, if there's some, perhaps some new information, perhaps, but that's not the case here. Uh, so otherwise, it's very rare that motions to reconsider occur, quite frankly. Um, it was not, in particular in this instance, there was nothing new offered at least from my perspective, and hence my vote reflected that. Now, there were um, a couple of votes that changed. Why? You'd probably have to ask those individuals directly why that, that occurred. But I don't, see, I, I don't see anything untoward, but I do see it as being an unusual opportunity to reconsider. It does, just doesn't happen often. Councilor Garitano. Sure, thank you. Uh, just wanted to follow up. I know Council Member Stevens mentioned about the Village Green and this property next to it, but this is really more of a point of information. There is actually a three acre parcel between this property and the Village Green. So I just want to make sure folks aren't misled by that, that there is a gap in between these two properties. Um, is that what you're doing, Joe, pointing that out? So uh, there is a property, it's the holiday property. And our economic, develop, economic development manager mentioned that property not too long ago, that um, it's a property that's been listed, as is probably several properties on Crestview. So that's uh, just, again, a point of information to make sure that everyone understands that this is not adjacent to the village green. Councilor Stevens. Um, two things. 
uh, one, I know that uh, it says access to for construction is all through Main Street, nothing on Etherton Road. How did that? How does that get policed, so to speak? You know, how do how do you make sure? Is that code enforcement? Is that the police officers themselves, or is that working with the you know the the general contractor? How does how does that come about? Well, we've struggled on Etherton Road with Main Street Crossing in Cambury. Um, Typically, we require signs to be posted at all access points from new development onto Etherton Road saying no construction access. It is a joint effort between the St. Louis County Police Department and our code enforcement officers. We oftentimes depend on neighbors to call and we try to get there as quickly as we can. But nine times out of 10, we'll go to the developer and, and advise them if they can't stop it, we can certainly stop the development until they do. And then, um, so when they come down Main Street, are they still going to have to make a right onto Etherton to get in there, or are they going to come all the way, like, is it going to be access from the north or access from the west? As part of the improvement plans, the construction drawings, the developer is required to show the temporary off-street parking for construction purposes. We'll make that on-site, their property, and we'll require them to basically do it off of the dedication strip next to Crestview Drive. Okay. And then um, also, I don't know if this is a question for you or maybe the city attorney, but um, before the legislation gets prepared, um, if we are going to change zoning to allow for high density development, I think that the developer should be required to pay the full portion of the improvements. Um, so I know that's half of the full build out on Main Street. Would it be appropriate to do that now, or is it something that should come later on in the process when it gets closer to the site development or the? <clears throat> I don't know if that needs to be required in the, the the ordinance to, you know, to allow it or not. Just just to make sure, I'm I'm sorry if I may. go ahead. So you turn again. Just to make sure I'm clear on what you're asking in terms of full amount of. Improve. Can, can I just to be clarification? What are you asking that be paid? So if the when? if the normal requirement is half cost of the construction to build out Main Street, Crestview Drive, whatever it's called, um, and then in this proposal, it's 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 not listed um, in the packet requiring the full build out. Um, how do we get that in there? I guess is my question. Do you, would you do it now when legislation is prepared, or would you do it later when? Are you are you saying the full bill up meaning the entirety of Crestview Drive? No, 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 no. Just, Just the requirements the for the the with? the improvement okay. requirements. So the sidewalks, the street trees, the curbs, you know, all of those things. How do you how do, how does council make sure that the developer is paying their fair share? I guess is my question. Well, assuming that such a requirement could be made which i'd have to analyze and confirm it would be a condition on the ordinance in the in the in the development ordinance that would be approved so when you make a recommendation that the legislation be prepared that would be an amendment to that recommend amendment to the recommendation that exists in the packet to include that requirement uh, but then we would have to review that to confirm that it is appropriate can i go ahead and make that motion now it would um, be appropriate at the time of the vote we still have a public so when we have the through. second reading of the of the legislation or at the time of at, the vote at the time of the vote to recommend preparation of the legislation gotcha thank so, you so i just have a question for you city attorney young i think i heard you say that you were not sure of the propriety of that legally if that is that true or not and if it is then do we want to include that at this point given that it may not be something that should be done or did I misunderstand what you said uh, it's anytime we're talking about a change in terms of a requirement for a payment I'd like to review it before I confirm whether you can or can't um, so my recommendation would be actually to ask us to review that uh, and come forward with a recommendation when the legislation is presented if, that's if it acceptable. is and then it would be right. amendable per code at the second reading so would so could I do a motion to postpone until you get back to us on that once a motion is made if it is you can always make a motion to postpone but okay but that would be the the, pro, the correct process that you would need to do the correct okay thank you councilman greg nani yes thank you um i have some comments and some questions um 
As I understand it, you and I talked about this. I've listened to this discussion about this property until I've my ears have fallen off. Um, and I'll tell you what is important about this is that it's important because it's part of our town center plan and it's been in existence since the town, since the city of Wildwood was created by the people who did the charrettes that put this together, who thought about these types of issues uh, for future development. One of the arguments I've heard here is that we're not getting any commercial development in Wildwood. Well, we might not be. That's not to say we won't ever. Um, I think Mrs. Vedvik said something I think is important. It's not that it can't happen, but if you build it out, it won't happen because you're not going to blight these houses and tear them down to put up commercial buildings at a later date, I can assure you. I've asked you before, Joe, and I'm going to ask you again. You said that I asked you if there was enough space around the, the green, and Mr. Garitano has pointed out that there's a space between the the city property and this this property that's still available, technically speaking, and that would be still designated as downtown. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. So there is some downtown area immediately adjacent. The yellow area, refresh my memory, what is that? That's near Acres. It's a development of three-acre home sites that well predates the city of Wild. Okay, so that would never be developed as downtown district or whatever. No, correct? it is the lowest density residential district that exists in town center. And will likely stay that way, right? The intent of the neighborhood edge designation was in response to requests from those owners with the original plan not to overdevelop their area. Okay, that's okay with me. Uh, reference to the density. It's always been understood that the town center is denser by its very nature. I know a lot of people don't like that. They don't understand how this came about or the reasons why it came about. So the density is not of concern to me as much as it is that we are destroying our commercial zone areas. That's, real, that's really a problem because if once you've built on these properties and you haven't put any commercial there, you're never going to get that back. That's the way it is. So I'm real concerned about that issue. The other issue is, and I think Mr. Bosworth, I may have asked him about this before, how are the people who are going to buy these houses going to feel when the commercial properties with a lot of traffic and other things going on around there are going to be right up against their, their property line, basically? I can see the complaints that will come forward to this console at some point as they're being too noisy or whatever, whatever they're being. But that's a concern for the future of the people who will come there. Now, you might say, well, that's their problem. Well, it, it is and it isn't. What we've seen all along is that whenever we've let people be in a particular area, they get used to what's there. Look at what happened with Brightleaf. Everybody got used to the trees. It was town center. It was always town center. Then when the trees came down and this development came in, everybody was up in arms and ticked off about the fact that all the trees came down, and maybe not all the trees needed to come down, but the fact of the matter is it was town center, and it was from the very beginning. You know, somehow or another, the future has to be considered in these issues. And if the future is not considered in these issues, then what happens is you have calamity and chaos and confusion in, down the road. Maybe all of us won't be here, but somebody's going to be sitting up here, and they're going to be listening to the same music. So anyway, I just point this out to you. Concern yourselves about what our town center plan is supposed to be. Concern yourselves about the, the, the fact that what happens in the future if we build things out, and then we don't have them available for what we want them for. Consider yourselves, for, consider what happens when we build things out, and people in the future who live in these particular areas are going to be upset about them. Just a thought. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Garitano has a point of information. Uh, actually, <clears throat> my comments before were a point of information. But oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but I will. Well, let's get then, if you don't mind, we have yeah. two others first. So yeah. thank you for bearing with me. Councilor McCune. I think that Councilmember Greg Natty kind of uh, hit on the points that I wanted to talk about is that, you know, I worked hard with the committee on that Village Green as well. And I think that the residents, this is long overdue. And I'm concerned with the build out of this. And I can't support it for that reason. I just feel that it's doing a disservice for what we're trying to, to do moving forward. I think that the parking is going to be a problem if we try to do something on a village green. Where are we putting people? 
um, to do city events. The lighting, if we have lighting there, um, the traffic, yes, the residents are going to complain nonstop. And I do support that the commercial development, uh, that's what the Village Green is about. And I think that the education we've, I know that Councilmember Greg Nani has pounded this into the, the pavement to say how important that is. And I think that the development, um, it's our duty to kind of look at that. I think that the postings and the comments that went out, I don't think people really understand the full scope. I mean, you present an 80 page paper to residents that live in the area, unless it's their neighbor, they're not gonna read through the material. So I'm just a little concerned that after the fact of this council passes this um, and they understand what's gonna happen, we're gonna be facing a little bit of heat from the neighboring uh, residents. So for that, I can't support it. I'm, I'm for the Village Green and for what the city wants and for what we can do for our residents versus giving them more homes, which we have plenty in Brightleaf that are having trouble filling. So that's where I live. Mr. Mayor, if I may. So just so the city council is clear, the Village Green was purchased by the city council, fully aware that they were taking six acres out of the downtown district. Now, the rationale for doing that, to have public space in the heart of town center, is an excellent rationale. But remember that Village Green has four sides, one of which is City Hall. Again, a decision made by the city to build an institutional building on downtown district designated property. To the south is Near Acres and Neighborhood Edge. Always has been since 1996. Nothing's changed on the other two sides of Village Green. It's downtown district. The depth of that remaining parcel on the south side of Crestview Drive is probably about 200 to 250 feet of depth. Easily could accommodate in a commercial area. And just to remind everybody, these six acres were purchased because they are in close proximity to the parking garage, 300 spaces. We'll never be able to park our events solely on the six acre site or on the six acre site in City Hall. But when you use our parking garage like it's intended to be, it is convenient parking a short distance from the six acres. Thank you. Councilmember Bartoni. Joe, on Google Maps, on there's six, seven, eight buildings or homes there now, they would all be gone? If development were to occur, yes, there's the potential for those homes to be purchased with the agreement of the property owner and redeveloped. Okay, and, and it just kind of gives me a better visual as I'm looking at this as what's going to go. Um, I'm definitely interested in the Main Street build out. I mean, to see that, but I, you know, if we can legally do it, that would be a wonderful discussion. But I do have a little bit of concern about. 12 houses on here also you know it is it might be a little bit tight but so are we are you asking for approval are, are we voting on rezoning as well as this development or are we just voting on the rezoning I would assume you're voting on the development and the steps necessary for it to proceed oh. forward which is the rezoning the use of the overlay district and an endorsement of the planning and zoning commission's change to the regulating plan. Again, remember under state statute, the planning and zoning commission is empowered to make the land use designation changes. But thereafter, the responsibility of change in zoning, the overlay districts is solely with the city council. And Joe, at the planning and zoning meetings, was there discussion about the 12 houses and, you know, maybe make a few more people happy if it was nine or six? Certainly, as uh, Councilmember Werther mentioned, the density discussion was brought up by several of the commission members. But at the end of the day, um, the 12 was retained. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Edens. Okay, so I'm fine with preparing legislation, but I'm on the fence and I kind of want to go through my mental reasoning and then have uh, Mr. Jacquin come up to answer a question for me. So I am sympathetic to not taking more land out of town center designation. And to echo Council Member Greg Nani, 
when you're thinking about making decisions 20 years in advance, 25 years in advance, when you take away commercial real estate potential or potential to have something, you know, that's mixed use and looks more like a Clayton or something like that, then there can be pressures 20 years from now to open up and rezone three acre lot minimums in another part of the city because what happens when there's nowhere else to put anything? And we are a bedroom community. We do have mostly commuters. And so there, there's other limitations right now in the area that we have for workspaces. So I'm trying to anticipate that. On the other hand, what I hear from my residents is I don't want to see anymore. I like homeostasis. And part of that isn't because there was an issue with the town center plan originally. It's actually a statement about the cities around us. It's about feeling like you're being encroached with Ellisville and seeing shopping centers. It's about feeling like you're being encroached with Chesterfield if you live in the Wild Horse area. So I'm also hearing, you know, I don't want to see any more in town centers. So I don't want a domino effect where because we change something to neighborhood transition, then more and more and more falls. But I also want to respect my residents who are not seeing the same future that I have anticipated for Wildwood. And that's a, a bit of a conundrum. So as an economic development manager, and we have talked about this in committee, what development looks like across from Crestview, what it would look like to incorporate and expand that street. Um, we have RFPs. Can you explain how this got your stamp of approval? Mm -hmm. And it, and, and again, I mean, I, mean um, I, I, I understand exactly why a resident in a pre-existing neighborhood doesn't want to look outside of their window and, and see a commercial building. I get that. Definitely. Um, part of it and the, the support of the change from downtown to neighborhood general um, largely is listening to Joe and, and working with Joe and understanding land use principles a lot more that he knows than I do. Um, knowing Main Street Crossing directly across Atherton Road and trying to mirror, complement that land use across the other side. Um, cognizant of what those neighbors on the west side of the road would like to see on the east side of the road. Um, the second part is more market demand based. Um, okay. Before this uh, proposal, the previous uh, amount of downtown designated property around Crestview Drive was about 35 acres. Um, that includes both sides of Crestview, north and south, from Market, just west of where we are, over to Etherton Road, was about 35 acres of downtown designated property. Mm -hmm. um, in, lo in the location that we are, in the western periphery of St. Louis County, uh, 35 acres of downtown designated property is a lot. Um, I don't know and I don't believe that that is... Um, I believe that's a, too much for what we need in this area at this point in time. Okay. Uh, I think 20 is enough. Um, I also know that given the residential density that we have in place today, having additional residents in close proximity to this area further makes the demand greater for downtown designated property immediately surrounding it. So having residents, including at this project nearby, make the s surrounding areas that much more attractive for further downtown development. Okay, so and what you're saying is with the chicken and the egg, that in order to attract mm -hmm. and support the commercial that we hope to have, Correct. this could be helpful? Businesses largely, development largely relies on population density, um, demand, traffic, um, all those kinds of factors that lend that developer, that business to believe that their business, their development will be successful. Um, our density at this point in time uh, has a certain roof, a certain limit on the amount of development or commercial business that can be entertained. Adding additional residents such as, the, as this project nearby does make the other downtown property more attractive for business and commercial development. And you anticipate with the need reserved sorry the reserved zone um if this is changed to still be the same if we meet our population cap mm -hmm. if we expand out okay all right um it, I, what i'm again and I'll, I'll say it again what i'm hearing is the residents that feel trapped by their surrounding that is out of our jurisdiction, which is influencing how they feel about town center. And, per, and, and that's up for us to review as to whether we think that makes sense with a 30 year goal, 50, but you help kind of put me at ease. So thank you. Sure. Councilmember Garitano. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Councilmember Greg Nanny, you mentioned the concerns of tomorrow, the future. 
actually these are the concerns I'm hearing today by the people that live right across from it and the concerns about commercial being across from their homes so rather than the future we actually have the people here that are impacted and so that's what I have heard and that's an issue that I would like to try to solve and so thinking about the town center and this is good timing that Joe is back because Joe knows the proximate figures um, how large is the town center by acreage as of today it's about 880 acres in size okay and how much of that is undeveloped as it is oh that's a good question we've done an analysis of that and mr. Jackwin helped us with some mapping exercise but it's actually less than 50% if I were to offer my best guess right now. Okay, so less than 50 is still available land in the town center. So uh, in the last few years, in looking at all of the city, all the approved rezonings that have gone through this city in the last few years, we rezoned a total of two acres, a total of six homes, one home on Lindy Lane, one home on Center Avenue, and the other one was Old Town Park for four homes. That is all we have rezoned in the last few years. So there is a lot that we ha hear about, but those are decisions made from the past. I think that has drastically slowed down and dropped. So um, I think that the Planning and Zoning Commission has probably been doing a really good job because we have seen proposals come to us that have not made it move forward. Um, so again, my concern is regarding the residents that I represent and their concerns about living across from something that is downtown, which is the densest form of commercial that you can have. When you look at the permitted and conditional type of uses for a downtown, um, I think it really scares the people that live right over there who have invested and bought their homes. So looking at the options on the table, the preference is to see something that's residential, which are what we're hearing. So on behalf of what I'm hearing from the residents, and what I would do is um, I would suggest we make a motion to prepare the legislation and then during that time we can hear from the city attorney and I would prefer that the city attorney do some research rather than just acting impulsively and throwing something in there when there hasn't been a chance by the department or the city attorney to look at it legally I think we have the time we've done that before and if there's a modification that needs to be made it can be done at the second reading we are the council so therefore I'll make the motion to prepare the legislation or a second. We, we need to finish the public hearing, but we'll come to you to make that motion just in a second. All right, thank you. And thank you. Uh, Councilor Remy. Just to clarify, if we prepare legislation, we and uh, we vote on that legislation, and we would have to have a super majority, right? 11 votes? No, the but vote the vote to have legislation prepared would be a majority? No, no, no not, not, not to prepare it. But when it comes to the vote, after it's prepared and we actually vote, it would have to be a supermajority or a referendum by the public, correct? The overlay district would require 11 of the 16 yes. members to support. That's what I thought. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I understood exactly what would happen. Not the motion tonight for preparing the legislation, but ultimately we would require 11 votes. Okay. I appreciate Mr. Garitano's comments. I think that the difficulty that many of us have is certainly town center, although it sits in Ward 8, certainly is, uh, is a good representation of the entire city. And so a lot of our citizens may have some insights into this, and certainly during public opinion or public participation, it'd be nice to hear from the entire city. I think at times we may hear different things from different uh, folks, um, and it's hard really at this point to gauge where people sit, and I just don't know that answer yet. Councilmember Dodwell. Um, I went back and looked at the current town center plan and I'm a little bit concerned because the document that is included that is sort of giving the blessing for us to approve this particular um, development is referring to what the 
town center update committee um, is proposing which is taking more downtown center area and we would have a nice clean um, thoroughfare to get to Main Street if we keep residents to the west of Etherton versus to the east of Etherton. And I'm seeing creep here. I tend to agree with um, Council Member Gregnani that um, we're creeping across where we have a good delineator right now. Um, and with the information I have today, I don't think I can vote in favor of this, not because the um, developer isn't trying to put together a good quality product, um, but I just think we're running into creep mode here, and I, I can't support it. Councilor McCutcheon. Um, with all due respect, Dr. Grignani, which I have a great deal for you, um, this city belongs to the residents. The city is the residents. The residents have repeatedly and overwhelmingly said they want less dense population and, and housing. So, and it, and I, the other comment I hear from residents is, well, we have all this commercial property sitting here and a lot of it's empty. Um, so they, they aren't in favor of additional commercial property either. Um, the villages of Brightleaf was rezoned. I think it was 2011 or 2012 because it was changed to neighborhood general and neighborhood edge. So it was rezoned. 2015 point. Uh, point. Okay. So um, there has been more than the four properties that have been rezoned. So um, I, I just really can't support this. I have to, I have to go on the, on the side of the residents. It's their city. They don't want a lot of dense development. Um, they don't like the empty commercial building sitting around. Um, Wildwood was made up so that the citizens could govern themselves and um, state how they wanted their environment to be. We're losing trees. We're losing green space. I can't support it. So uh, seeing nothing further, um, Councilmember Garitano, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, public, uh, any other speaker cards anyone wish to speak that's in the audience relative to this? If you want to speak, if you could please come and fill out a card. I'll tell you what, you can speak first and, and then just mention your name and ward, if you don't mind, and then um, fill out a speaker card after you've uh, finished. Thank you for your time. My name is Joe Stanton. Um, I recently moved here, and I live on 2512 Etherton Road. So I'm in Ward 8, and when I looked into buying the house, I called, and I because I came from a high-density residential in Illinois, and I was moving away from that. And I looked into where I bought, and they were all one-and-a-half to three-acre properties, and they were saying that was not going to change, that it was all on the west side of Etherton Road. So where they built the, the little houses, and I agree, that's fine, they're there. But now it seems like you're changing it onto my side of the road, and you're going to start moving towards me. I would just soon you rezone my property so I can move out again, because it looks like I'm going to get sunk by all these little houses, and I don't like the, the dense population. I think that's wrong. I think if you had bigger houses on that three-acre lot that they're wanting to upgrade, maybe six, where you have decent-sized houses and decent-sized land, I think you'd be far better off, but that's just my opinion. But when uh, they ask that the residents on Etherton Road are for it, I'm one that's not. I didn't want to speak too quickly because I just moved here and jump in and say, well, you know, but I did do my research and then find out, well, now we're going to change it. So that's kind of a drag for me. I wish I'd have known that in advance. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And if you would uh, please fill out that card, we'd appreciate it. Anyone else wish to speak relative to okay. this one? Okay. So if I may, Mr. Mayor, sure. So again, the existing designation under the town center plan is downtown district. That's the most intense commercial district in town center. The change is to residential. So again, we're de-intensifying the use of the property by the action and the recommendation of the planning and zoning commission. Okay. Thank you. Now, Councilmember, uh, so the hearing is closed. Councilmember Garitano, you had mentioned you wanted to make a motion. Do you still want to do that? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, based again on the feedback and uh, appreciate Mr. Stanton's comments. I haven't spoken with him before, but 
Uh, based on what I've seen here, the number of comments and support versus those against, and then the comments I've heard and uh, people here. Um, I'll go ahead and make the motion for the preparation of this. Um, and then uh, we can see how it goes. Okay, is there a second to the motion? Okay, so we have a motion and a second to prepare legislation. Any discussion on the motion? We've had a lot of discussion. So you have anything new, Councilmember Stevens? Because we, we've had two spots on this. So anything new? Motion to amend to require the full uh, build-out requirements for the street network improvements. Okay, I think we heard our city attorney say that that probably wouldn't be a good idea. To well, he said probably, but if uh, you know if we can do it, I would rather require the develop. If we're going to change the zoning to allow for development, the developer should pay their fair share of the improvements. So I would so, like to get that in the le in the legislation okay. first I, before it moves forward. And I respect that. Uh, without uh, getting into the merits of that, which I might agree with, uh, my concern is, uh, is it your, and just to clarify, is it your position, City Attorney Young, that it would be better for that to occur uh, at a second reading or if a postponement were done so that you could research that? Is that your opinion? That would be my recommendation. Okay, I'm gonna rule that out of order uh, for that reason. Any further discussion? Councilman Remy. I have a procedural question. So sure. just given the potential implications of this change, um, since we'll at the end require a supermajority, what would be the deadline if we wanted to put this out to the citizens for the referendum vote in April? Is there a, when would we be able to do such? Where are we past the deadline that that could actually occur? I just wanted to make sure that, so this, this is really city. only in the hands of council. Yes, I believe so. The, the city administrator says that that deadline has passed. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? See no discussion. Roll call vote, and this is for the preparation of legislation. And Councilmember Stevens, the amendment you're trying to make can be made after the second reading if it, if this gets that far. So just for clarification, you'll still have an opportunity to do that. Okay. Um, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Dodwell, no. Councilmember Remy. Can you just come back to me? I hope I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? No. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Werther? No. Councilmember Jordan? No. Councilmember McCutcheon? No. Councilmember Farmer? No. Councilmember Dillard? No. Councilmember Bartoni? No. Councilmember Gregnani? No. Councilmember Stevens? No. Councilmember McCune? No. Councilmember Bope? No. And Councilmember Remy? No. Okay, the motion fails. Thanks to all of you particip for participating in the public hearing. And Joe, thanks for your uh, answering of all the questions. Moving into uh, our legislation, we have uh, three second readings. The first is Bill 2538. It's before the council for final passage, and it concerns wards one and three. Is there a motion for the second reading of the bill? Made by Councilmember Remy, seconded by Councilmember Greg Nani. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Ms. Lobeck, please read Bill 2538. Bill 2538, an ordinance of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to negotiate and execute a city contractor agreement on behalf of the City of Wildwood with Pace Construction, LLC, for the replacement of Etherton Road Bridge number 3-110 over Bonham Creek, including traffic control and other incidental items as shown on the construction drawings and specifications. Rick, do you have anything further you'd like to mention to the council in addition to the information that uh, it's been provided? I have nothing further, Mayor. The bill is ready for final passage. Okay. Any questions for Rick? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Lobeck, please call the roll for final passage of Bill 2538. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? Yes. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Werther? Aye. Councilmember Jordan? Yes. Councilmember McCutcheon? Yes. Councilmember Farmer? Yes. Councilmember Dillard? Yes. Councilmember Bartoni? Yes. Councilmember Gregnani? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dodwell? Yes. Okay, Bill 2538 has passed. 
Moving uh, to Bill 2539, it's before the Council also for a second reading and it concerns Ward 8. Is there a motion for the second reading of the bill? Made by Councilmember Garitano, second by Councilmember Stevens. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Ms. Lobeck, please read Bill 2539. Bill 2539, an ordinance of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, amending Chapter 390, Traffic Schedule 6, of the Municipal Code of the City of Wildwood by adding intersection stop restrictions at the intersection of Cambury Lane with Larksong Drive, Kilair Lane, and Etherton Road. Rick, anything further you'd like to mention relative to Bill 2539? No, Mayor, again, the bill is ready for final passage, but I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Rick? Any comments? Councilmember McCune. I, it might be for Captain Mundell. I just had a question from the public. When these are enacted um, initially and they become part of the city code, it, do you issue warnings or give like a 30-day pass to some people so they get used to it, or is there like citation right away? Okay, thank you. So in case members of the public watching did not hear the captain's answer, there is a, a time period which it's phased in, if you will, 30 or so days. Thank you, Captain, for that response. Uh, Councilor Garitano. Sure. Also, just to provide uh, more information, these stop signs actually have already been there and probably for years, um, probably goes back more than five years. So I think this is more just a technicality that we need to get this ordinance passed so that the police department can enforce people going through the stop signs, which is a complaint of those residents over in Canberra. Thank you. Anything further? All right, seeing none, uh, Ms. Lobeck, would you please call the roll for final passage of Bill 2539? Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? Yes. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Werther? Aye. Councilmember Jordan? Yes. Councilmember McCutcheon? Yes. Councilmember Farmer? Yes. Councilmember Dillard? Yes. Councilmember Bartoni? Yes. Councilmember Grignani? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dodwell? Yes. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Okay. Bill 2539 passes. Moving last and second readings to Bill 2540. It's before the Council for final passage and concerns all wards. Is there a motion for the second reading of the bill? We have a Councilmember Garitano, second by Councilmember Dodwell. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. We have one abstention. Councilmember Werther, any other abstentions? Ms. Lobeck, would you please read Bill 2540? Bill 2540, an ordinance by the City Council of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, authorizing the Mayor of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, on behalf of this community, to negotiate and execute a user agreement for subscriber radios with St. Louis County, Missouri, acting for the St. Louis County Emergency Communication Commission for an interoperable mobile communications radio system. Uh, City Administrator Ansem, do you have anything you would like to add further relative to Bill 2540? No, thank you, Mayor. Happy to answer any questions. All right, any questions for our City Administrator on this or anyone else? Uh, Councilmember Garitano. Yeah, I just want to thank the uh, city administrator and the rest of the city staff because I think this was one of the uh, early suggestions you brought forth as a way to improve communications with our city staff, uh, especially, I guess, during times of emergencies and all. And I know that was a, an issue with the flooding we had. So thanks for bringing that up. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anything further? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Lobeck, please call the roll for final passage of Bill 2540. Councilmember Brost? Yes. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Werther? Abstain. Councilmember Jordan? Yes. Councilmember McCutcheon? Yes. Councilmember Farmer? Yes. Councilmember Dillard? Yes. Councilmember Bartoni? Yes. Councilmember Gregnani? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dogwell? Yes. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Councilmember Edens? Yes. Okay, the bill passes. Moving into uh, first readings, Bill 2541 is before the Council for first reading, and it concerns all wards. Is there a motion for the first reading of the bill? Made by Councilmember Greg Nani, second by Councilmember McCune. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Ms. Lobeck, please read Bill 2541. 
Bill 2541, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Wildwood, Missouri to negotiate and execute a consultant services agreement on behalf of the city of Wildwood with George Butler Associates, Inc. for the inspection of short span bridges and crossroad culverts on rural roadways within the city of Wildwood. Rick, do you have anything further you'd like to mention relative to Bill 2541? Um, no, Mayor, but I'm available for any questions or comments from the council. Councilor Stevens. On those uh, scoring that they give, or is that going to be like the the zero to 100 scale like we've seen on other bridge projects? Am I correct in thinking that? I believe that is that is correct, yes. They will essentially evaluate each structure and score it so that we get an idea of what is the worst and what is the best. That's what I, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Councilor Dodwell. Um, this appears to be a group that I've not heard of before. Is this a new organization that's doing this inspection, or have we used them in the past? I may have just well, we, lost track of time. Um, we have been using them. Uh, GBA is the firm that they've been more commonly known as currently. I know the agreement probably says George Butler Associates. That was their former doing business name, but they've they've changed over. They did the, okay, no problem. Councilor Greg Nani. Yeah, just a couple of questions. It's a it says it's twenty five thousand dollar budget impact. Is this this is a one time inspection issue, or is this some sort of an ongoing project? Well, it will be ongoing in the sense that we will not complete all the work this year. We envision that it will carry over into next year, and we will have to budget a similar amount for completion of the project next year. All right, so this would be almost a yearly budgeted item. Is that correct? Um, we would expect. My expectation is that uh, over the course of two, certainly not more than three years, we'll complete complete all the small span bridges. Plus, we've added in this year uh, an inspection of all our culverts as well. So we're doing a little more than we have done in the past. So we would budget money at least next year, and there could be some the following year to finish up all the culvert inspections. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bill will be on the council's agenda for the next meeting. Uh, moving to Bill 2542. It's before the council for first reading. It also concerns all wards. Is there a motion for the first reading of the bill? Made by Councilmember Bartoni, second by Councilmember Edens. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Ms. Lobeck, please read Bill 2542. Bill 2542, an ordinance of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to negotiate and execute contracts with CB Engineering, Inc., doing business as Cochran, and Geotechnology, Inc., for construction, inspection, and materials testing services within the City of Wildwood. Thank you. Rick, anything further you want to mention relative to Bill 2542? Uh, no, Mayor, but again, I'm available for any questions or comments from the council. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Rick? Comments? All right. The bill will be on the council's agenda for its next meeting. Next, moving to Bill 2543, it's before the council for first reading, and it concerns Ward 3. Is there a motion for the first reading of the bill? We have a council member Remy, and council member Farmer seconds. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, Ms. Lobeck, please read Bill 2543. Bill 2543, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, approving the adjustment of certain common boundary lines between two lots of record identified as new parcels A and B, St. Louis County locator numbers 21W630013 and 21W540116, respectively, both being part of the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of Section 26, Township 45 North, Range 3 East, City of Wildwood, St. Louis County, Missouri, and more specifically, situated on the west side of State Route 109 at its intersection with Old Etherton Road, thereby allowing the existing telecommunications facility to remain in its current location, yet be transferred onto a residential property in lieu of the lot remaining of the lot containing the church while maintaining equal areas of, for both parcels of ground, all to be known as adjusted parcels A and B of the second plat of St. Paul's Lutheran Church boundary adjustment plat. Thank you. Joe, anything further you'd like to mention relative to Bill 2543? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor and members of City Council, the hatched area that is shown on the plat 
and portrayed on your monitors is the area of the adjustment that is changing. Formerly that was part of adjusted parcel A. It will now become part of new parcel B. Thank you. And uh, the speaker who was here uh, this evening with us um, had requested a second reading relative to this. Uh, you want to make that motion, Councilmember yeah. Remy? That motion for a second okay, so reading. We have a motion for a second reading, second by Councilmember Dodwell. Uh, this will take a two thirds vote. We'll do a voice vote try. If that doesn't work, we'll go to a roll call. All in favor of a second reading of Bill 2543, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Two thirds is met. Ms. Stremlinger, please read Bill 2543. Bill 2543. I'm sorry, Ms. Lobeck, please read <laughs> Bill 2543. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, approving the adjustment of certain common boundary lines between two lots of record identified as new parcels A and B, St. Louis County locator numbers 21W630013 and 21W540116, respectively, both being part of the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 26, Township 45 North, Range 3 East, City of Wildwood, St. Louis County, Missouri, and more specifically, situated on the west side of State Route 109 at its intersection with, with Old Etherton Road, thereby allowing the existing telecommunications facility to remain in its current location, yet be transferred onto a residential property in lieu of the lot containing the church, while maintaining equal areas for both parcels of ground, all to be known as adjusted parcels A and B of the second plat of St. Paul's Lutheran Church boundary adjustment plat. Thank you. Joe, anything further you'd like to mention relative to this bill? No, sir, but the department's available to answer any questions. Councilor Bartoni. Joe, are you okay with a second reading? Yes, sir, and thank you for asking. All right, so no further questions. Uh, Ms. Lobeck, please call the roll for final passage of Bill 2543. Council Member Jordan. Yes. Council Member McCutcheon. Yes. Council Member Farmer. Yes. Council Member Dillard. Yes. Council Member Bartoni. Yes. Council Member Gregnani. Yes. Council Member Stevens. Yes. Council Member McCune. Yes. Council Member Bope. Yes. Council Member Dodwell. Yes. Council Member Remy. Yes. Council Member Eden. Yes. Council Member Brost. Yes. Council Member Garitano. Yes. Council Member Werther. Aye. Uh, Bill 2543 has passed. Moving into resolutions, we have two. Resolution 2020-01 is before the council and it concerns wards one and three. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2020-01? Made by council member um, Brost, second by council member Dillard. Um, Ms. Lobeck, please read resolution 2020-01. Resolution 2020-01. 20-01, a resolution by the Council of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, authorizing submission of an application to the East-West Gateway Council of Governments and the Missouri Department of Transportation for federal funding of a capital improvement project to construct a new roundabout intersection improvement on State Route 109 at State Route BA, Babbler Park Drive, South Junction, under the Surface Transportation Program dash suballocated STP-S funding program for the St. Louis region. Thank you, Rick. Anything further you'd like to mention relative to resolution 2020-01? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just briefly, this is the first of two recommended projects that are recommended for application for federal funding. These both went through the Admin Public Works Committee previously, and the recommendation to apply for federal funds on these projects was approved by that committee. Um, both projects were recommending uh, or requesting uh, under the recommendation federal funding in the amount of 80% of the total cost for construction of the project. The city would be responsible for the remaining 20%. Uh, the first project is the Route 109 at BA South Junction Roundabout Improvement Project that we have previously submitted um, and unfortunately not been successful in prior years. Um, and with that, I'm a bell for any questions from the council. Thank you. Councilor McCune. I just want to say that I commend the the um, subcommittee that we worked on this. Uh, we worked hard on it, and I think that it's important to understand that there was three projects presented to us, but the criteria that we used was uh, public safety. So we felt that this was the intersection that needed the most attention. 
Um, we've had a lot of accidents here, and I think that we have a good chance of getting this one based on the criteria that Rick's going to put together. So um, on behalf of all the committee members, I think we did a good job by looking through that, and uh, hopefully we can get this one. So thank you, Rick, for all your hard work on this one. Thank you. Councilor Greg Nani. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I believe this was on our priorities list with the uh, – with public safety board that was developed a few months back is that correct it's that one is, of the one of the issues i know that is correct and I, I failed to mention that but we did go through a process with board of public safety um last year and we also discussed it earlier or uh, last fall where we came up with a prioritized list of potential improvements to state routes and the this project was essentially at the top of that prioritized list so it was deemed to be the highest priority project now my next question is Knowing that MoDOT is involved in this, <coughs> all right? <laughs> that is correct, sir. Uh, when can we expect this to actually happen? Well, actually, the federal funding um, is allocated through the East West Gateway Council of Governments, and the earliest I believe it could occur would be, excuse me one second, for construction, the earliest it could be started would be 2023 more likely 2024 essentially when we get selected assuming we do they would tell us what year the funds <laughs> are linked to what federal fiscal year um, so it's it's really uh, determined if we are awarded the funding I'm gonna be 73 years old you better hurry up <laughs> understood councilmember Garitano yeah, and and also to keep in mind I think the timing actually might work out well because we recently heard that MoDOT had received federal funding for the construction of a roundabout at Wild Horse Creek Road and 109, and I believe that is 2022. Is that correct? Or I think, I think yeah. that probably is correct. So this would, in theory, follow that in, that improvement work. So yeah, builds a little gap in there so that we don't inconvenience. Yep. Councilor McCutcheon. Yeah, um, I have a question. So we've we've had a death on Highway 100. And I don't know, is it Route T, Pond Road, somewhere in there? And so are we applying for federal funds to address that issue? And why not if we haven't? Because MoDOT has stated they're not going to do anything about that. So. Well, we, we are not applying. I guess my response to that would be is that Potential improvements at that location are still under study by MoDOT, and we are impatiently waiting for the results of that study, frankly. Once that is out, then the next step, once we agree on what improvement would be in implemented that location, then it'd be the next step would be getting funding to construct it. Hopefully that is forthcoming soon. It could, yes, hopefully. Councilor Garitano, did you want to say something further? No, everything was already said. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Councilmember Stevens. Rick. Um, did the committee or do you look at other traffic calming measures or other traffic safety measures other than roundabouts? Some people love them, some people hate them, but it seems like every improvement that we do on 109 is a roundabout. Is that really just the only option that's feasible or do you look at other things as well? I think it's what the engineers recommend, but go ahead. I believe that's correct. It's been a while since we went through the process. The city did um, hire Lockmuller group to evaluate the intersection and they prepared a conceptual study and, and out of that study is where the concept for the roundabout came from um, so ultimately obviously it would be it's a state highway it has to be blessed by MoDOT um, for the installation so far they have been on board with this concept mm -hmm. Councilor Remy and just to that point um, which I think is a good question uh, if we could when we put these roundabouts in have some sort of educational pro uh, to the public about perhaps how to use the roundabouts that's come up a number of times I think when Councilmember Garitano and I have met with some different people um, and certainly when the project is done if we could remove the cones I know the current one that's there is causing a lot of problems right now with people getting confused so we'll make note of that and we'll if we can inform MoDOT relative to that thank you for bringing that up mm -hmm. I've heard the same thing Councilor Werther thank you um, to back to Councilmember Stevens comments historically this goes back probably to 2002 maybe 2003 even studies w were done here by the city undertaken by MoDOT uh, and that plan included roundabouts uh, going from this area actually new college avenue area north i think it was nine maybe mr brown maybe a dozen but 
there was quite a few, needless to say. But the idea, of course, was to go ahead and make sure that 109 would not, one, become a superhighway, but two, to provide for a good flow of traffic of all hours and, and try to avoid the instances that we see now where, unfortunately, you know, you have people come out of their subdivision and they can't make a right or a left out because of the traffic that's there. A roundabout allows you the ability to slow the traffic to be able to do that, and that's why MoDOT endorsed it, uh, actually even endorsed that plan that we had put forward then. Okay, any further comment? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to adopt resolution 2020-01, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One opposed. Councilmember McCutcheon, any other opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution 2020-01 passes. Finally, moving to resolution 2020-02, it's before the council and it concerns wards four, seven, and eight. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2020-02? Made by Councilmember Werther, second by Councilmember I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And Council Member Farmer seconds. Um, Ms. Lobeck, please read Resolution 2020-02. Resolution 2020-02. A resolution by the Council of the City of Wildwood, Missouri, authorizing submission of an application to the East-West Gateway Council of Governments and the Missouri Department of Transportation for federal funding of a capital project to upgrade the city's three traffic signals provide ADA compliance and resurface and rehabilitation sections of Taylor Road and Manchester Road under the Surface Transportation Program dash suballocated STP dash S funding program for the St. Louis region. Rick, anything further you'd like to mention relative to this resolution? Um, just briefly, Mayor, again, this is the city's project that would involve Manchester Road. We talked earlier in the work session about the limits. Manchester and Taylor, it will resurface both of those roads, rehab them, and modify and upgrade the traffic signals. We have the three signals, one at Taylor, Main, uh, Manchester, Pierside, Manchester, at Schnooks. Um, and we'll also address bicycle facilities on those, those two projects as well. So. Uh, again, the funding ratio would be 80-20. The city would pick up 20%. The federal government would pick up 80%. And if there's any other questions, I'd be glad to entertain them at this time. Councilor Garitano. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Rick. I think this is a great project. Good to be going back for this. I already mentioned to you some of the feedback is around the placement of the bus stop. And as the two lanes merge together, uh, sometimes that creates an issue for folks if there's a bus right there. And then, um, obviously, the, the road there, the resurfacing, is an important thing. Um, I've had a number of residents mention, I think you all find it interesting, that if you use the Waze app on your phone for traffic, there's like a perpetual pothole that comes up always on that app when you're driving down that section of road. So uh, I can't wait for that to go away. Thank you. We will Thank you. check into that right away. Any further comments on resolution 2020-02? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to adopt resolution 2020-02, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution passes. That takes us to miscellaneous. Does anyone have anything they want to mention before we go to adjournment? If not, I have one thing I want to bring forward. We have expenditures on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, approval of expenditures. Um, those are the first, first first item under miscellaneous. So you've been provided with those. Uh, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion to approve. Councilor Greg Nani. You're not going to like my question. Why do we need $444 for signs for coffee with the mayor? What's the matter with the old signs? Uh, they were stolen. Stolen? I believe one was stolen and two were damaged that needed to be repaired. Really? So three They've been around for a while. Signs. Yeah. But to answer your question, I think it's because it's to inform our residents of it. Well, I can assure you I didn't steal them. Oh, thank so, you. That's good. We wouldn't want you doing that. Do you want to make a motion to approve the expenditures? Oh, okay. So we have a motion from Councilmember Greg Nye to approve the expenditures, seconded by Councilmember Dodwell. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Do a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Werther? No. Councilmember Jordan? Councilmember McCutcheon? Yes. Councilmember Farmer? Yes. Councilmember Dillard? No. Councilmember Bartoni? Yes. Councilmember Gregnani? I'll say yes. Councilmember Stevens? No. Councilmember McCune? Yes. Councilmember Bope? Yes. Councilmember Dodwell? Yes. Councilmember Remy? Yes. Councilmember Edens? Yes. Councilmember Brost? Yes. Councilmember Garitano? Yes. So the motion passes. 
Um, does anyone have anything else they would like to raise under miscellaneous? Councilmember Cutchin? Um, I, I would appreciate it if somebody had looked into um, where Taylor Road hits 109. It's, it's dark there. It's hard for cars to see if it's clear and safe for them to go um, out onto 109. Um, and it's, it's hard to see the fact that there is a um, street sign there as well. So if somebody could check that out and see if we can't make that a little bit safer, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so noted. Anything further? Um, one thing I wanted to mention, if we could, uh, I'm gonna, I've, asked, uh, I've spoken with the city administrator. Um, between now and the next council meeting, he's going to send an email update to the council. Uh, depending on what that update is, it may or may not become an agenda item for the next work session relative to a game plan with dates to finish uh, the, the repairs to the women's bathroom on the floor without objection. All right, anything further? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Made by Councilmember Dodwell, second by Councilmember Edens. Non debatable. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.